we rise for divine service setting four. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As an ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We join together in the service of the word, speaking the introit responsively. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hands, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, on this day, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the day is from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God. Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And as this sound, and at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galilean? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th and 16th chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, When the Helper comes, who I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will, will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. Now I am going to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go away, I will send him to you. And when he comes... He will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment, concerning sin because they do not believe in me, concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer, concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, 
but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you that things that are to come, and he will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker...
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text for this, the festival of Pentecost, is from the Gospel reading, St. John's Gospel, the 15th chapter, where Jesus said, But when the Helper comes, who I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me, and you also will bear witness. Dear Christians, we confess in that Nicene Creed, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified. And then after speaking of his divine person, we confess his divine work, who spoke by the prophets, which comes from St. Peter's words, no prophecy of Scripture is of one's own interpretation. Now, I want to pause here for a moment in Peter's comment. Have you ever heard somebody say to you, whenever you're uh, talking to them about the biblical things, and you quote a Bible verse, and they say, well, that's just your opinion on that Bible verse? Like, yeah, I've had this happen a lot of times, talking to people about Jesus, and, they, and I quote a Bible verse, and they say, well, that, that's just your opinion on what that means. Well, what they're trying to do here, and let's be honest, is because they disagree with what that Bible verse says, and so they're trying to reduce the Word of God to a matter of man's opinion. But that is not right for one to do because... St. Peter's quote goes on, no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man. It's not somebody's opinion, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. The primary work of the Holy Spirit is the inspiration of the Holy Scriptures, the breathing out of God's word of truth by the prophets and apostles of the Old and New Testaments. Now, when that day of Pentecost had arrived, the apostles were all gathered together in one place. It was on the Lord's Day. And I was thinking about this during the, the choir piece, actually, that they probably, they were gathered together. This was on a Sunday. It was 50 days after Easter. And they were gathered together for worship. And I would think probably at the conclusion of the divine service was when this spectacular Pentecost event occurred. But suddenly they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. St. Peter explained that this was in fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And oh, by the way, we don't want to be confused on this idea of tongues as uh, modern Pentecostal Christians are. They think that this is some kind of utterance in some unknown spiritual language, but it is clearly set forth in the scriptures here that these were earthly national languages and these people all said, we hear them speaking in our own tongue, our native language. And so therefore they understood the gospel they were proclaiming. And by the way, what's the purpose of this giving of these languages at Pentecost? This was a sign that the gospel was for all. That everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Anybody happen to know, by the way, when this uh, phenomenon occurred the very next time? Anybody remember? A pre or I think it was in our text a few weeks back uh, in the, the uh, Acts reading. It was at the conversion of Cornelius and his household. Remember, the Lord told St. Peter, go to these people. And then he told him what God has called clean, let no one call unclean. And so he sent him over to Cornelius' house. And he was a Gentile. And he proclaimed Jesus to them. And then they 
experienced this phenomenon of speaking in these foreign languages. And St. Peter said, I see now that God shows no partiality, but everyone who calls upon him will be saved. And so this gift very rarely occurred, and it occurred to show that the gospel was for all people. It was perverted by the church in Corinthia and Corinth, just like it uh, is by some Christians today. And this gift uh, very quickly fell away with the spreading of the gospel to major parts of the known world. Then Peter, at Pentecost, preached what? Who? Jesus. He preached Jesus to the gathering crowd. His death, his resurrection, and his ascension on high. Then he concluded... Therefore, know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Peter explained that even though the people may have done this in ignorance, many of them wanted to see Jesus crucified because he wasn't the kind of Messiah they thought they really wanted to have. These people were cut to the heart that they were responsible for the crucifixion. And we might add, we ought to be cut to the heart always that we are responsible for Jesus' crucifixion as he bore our sin and his body on the cross. They said, Peter, what shall we do? And he responded, repent and believe and be baptized, excuse me, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And about 3,000 people were converted on that day. By the way, I also want to explain something here that's misunderstood by many people. We are called to repent and to believe in Jesus. Some people misunderstand the belief in Jesus and they think, well, this is something that I do. This is something I just pull up from within myself to be able to believe in Jesus. And others say, well, no, this conversion is worked by the Holy Spirit. So then some say, well, then, but the repentance, that's all on my part to recognize my sinfulness and then believe in Jesus. But that is not correct. The Holy Spirit, Jesus says, comes to convict and convince. He comes to convict, first of all, to show us how sinful we are so that then we are, we realize by the Holy Spirit who Jesus is and see Him as our only help and hope. Now, I want to tell a little story, uh, here about a guy named, uh, uh Vincent, uh, Fernier or, or Fernier, if you, if you speak it, uh, I think the way it probably correctly is in French, uh, Vincent Fournier. He was a man who was part of a uh, rock group in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. And um, he formed, uh, along with other men, a band, and they decided to change their name. And they were known for when they were on stage putting on really insane rock concerts, and as a matter of fact, they were very immoral and very gross even in their performances and the things they said and did on stage. That band happens to be uh, called, and therefore the leader of the band sort of ended up being called by default, the name Alice Cooper. So if you know anything about Alice Cooper, you know how um, bad these concerts were. But Alice Cooper, in the midst of this, somewhere along the line, was brought to Jesus. So he had a pastor ask him in an interview, I checked this, I saw this interview, um, he said, so you heard about the love of Jesus and you turned from your sinful ways and you embraced this wonderful love of Jesus. And he said, no, that's not the way it happened. And the pastor said, what? Well, what happened? He said, 
I recognize the fear of God. He said, God brings you to realize who you are and what you deserve, and then God brings you to Jesus so that you see his great love. You'll never see his love without first realizing that without him, he said, you're going to go to hell. And it's not going to be a nice place where you sit around and smoke marijuana with your friends, but it's going to be everlasting torment. And he said, that's what drove me to Jesus. So St. Paul said, the law is a schoolmaster to lead us to Christ. So what we want to understand is both repentance and faith are the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. People, we should have a healthy fear of God. I've heard Christians say, I've heard Lutherans say, oh, pastor, we're converted, we believe in Jesus, so now we don't have a fear of God. We just have an awe of God and his wonders. And I said, yes, we should have an awe of God and how wonderful he is in saving us when we can't save ourselves, but we better continue to have a healthy fear of God. Because do you really think that whenever you're drawn before the Lord Jesus Christ in judgment, that you're going to be standing there in awe of God or fearful before the most worthy eternal judge. So we have both fear and faith, fear and awe of God, repentance and faith. So the Holy Spirit caused the apostles then to proclaim Jesus, the only answer. Just as Jesus said, when the helper comes, the spirit of truth, he will bear witness about me. So the apostles, filled with the Holy Spirit, bore witness of Jesus. And the same Holy Spirit is working today whenever and wherever Jesus is being proclaimed. And not just any Jesus, but that Jesus of the prophetic and apostolic scriptures, penned by the guiding breath of the Lord and giver of life, who gave life to the writer's minds and mouths and hands to write the word of God about Jesus incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, who Jesus who was made man for us and for our salvation. So where Jesus is being rightly proclaimed, there is the Holy Spirit. For if the Spirit were not there, Jesus would not be proclaimed. For no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. And no one would believe that preaching about Jesus, except by that same Holy Spirit. St. Paul writes, the natural person, that is in our fallen condition of sin, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. Therefore, no one can rightly say, I accepted Jesus into my heart as Lord and Savior except he include in that by the grace and mercy of the Holy Spirit. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish to him. He is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Only by the aid of the Holy Spirit are they discerned. And by the way, I want to point out something here. You hear this word thrown about all the time. People say, well, boy, that was a spiritual event. And what do they mean by that? That word is rightly used only in Scripture and only by the Christian when they mean that which is being worked by the Holy Spirit. Not just because it's something emotional or mystical or whatever else that happened. Spiritual is reserved. That's a word reserved for the church of Jesus Christ, for individual believers in Jesus Christ the Lord. Now the creeds continue with the work of the Holy Spirit, saying that he brings the one holy Christian and apostolic church, one baptism for the remission of sins, and then in the baptismal creed, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Holy Spirit brings about the holy Christian church, 
which is simply believers in Jesus Christ, wherever they may be found. So the Holy Spirit works faith in Jesus. But the Spirit also works faith when the word and promises of Jesus are brought to God-given elements. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. Peter said at Pentecost, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. You receive the holy gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit when he comes, works faith. Through that faith, we receive the forgiveness of sins. St. Paul said it this way, arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on Jesus' name. Jesus said, when the spirit of truth comes, he will bear witness about me. Now, those who are say they are Christians, those who say they abide by the word of God, yet still will deny those things about holy baptism and say this is simply an ordinance, a law that you do after you become a believer to show everybody else that you become a believer. That's all it is, simply a sign. And when you say, well, what about all these scriptures that say this is much more than a sign? They'll say, well, that's just your opinion. See? But the Spirit, see, he, he works this faith in us by his grace and mercy. We say in the Shorter Creed, I believe in the communion of saints. That's the fellowship of the holy people gathered around the holy things. The gathering of the Lord's people who are the baptized of the Heavenly Father gathered around the Lord's Supper. After Pentecost, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, those new believers devoted themselves to four things. To the doctrine, that is the, the apostolic teaching is what it's called in scripture, doctrine, and then to fellowship, which means coming to church and worship, receiving the gifts of God and worship, the breaking of the bread, which is the Lord's Supper, and it says the prayer. And the church has historically understood that as the prayer of the church, then coupled with the Lord's prayer, just as Jesus promised he said, the Spirit will take what is mine and he will declare it to you. So the Spirit does every time we take, he, we hear take, eat, this is my body given for you and drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. So notice here, Christians, that the creeds rightly place the forgiveness of sins in a third article under the work of the Holy Spirit. Well, yes, it's true that that forgiveness is won for us by Jesus. That's confessed in the second article of the creed. But it is imparted to us when the Holy Spirit calls us to faith in Jesus. That's the third article of the creed. As St. Peter preached, through Jesus' name. And when you hear that Jesus' name, it's talking about by name, the whole reputation, the whole gospel that goes with Jesus Christ. Through Jesus' name, everyone who believes in him receives the forgiveness of sins. And let's face it, people, sin's the great problem. It's the problem above all problems. It's the very problem by which we have trouble in this life. It's the very problem by which we would be damned in the future. If not for Jesus, for our Father's grace, Jesus' great love and dying for us in the Holy Spirit calling us to faith in Jesus. So with all our sins stand forgiving, they're forgiven, there's nothing standing between us and our Heavenly Father. So Jesus welcomes us into his glorious presence right now in worship and into his nearer presence when we die and our purified souls will soar to the highest heavens to await the resurrection of our bodies only perfect in every way until life everlasting, and above all, in a resurrection without sin. We're so tainted by sin, we can't even begin to understand what that even means, to be totally free from the burden of original and actual sin. So the creeds here, once again, rightly, 
place the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting underneath the work of the Holy Spirit. For without this Lord and giver of life who works faith and breathes life into dead bones, there would be no forgiveness, no heaven, no resurrection to eternal life. Because the Son does His work through the Spirit. Dear Christians, St. Paul says, and I say now to you today, you are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit dwells in you. For you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. We are set apart by the Holy Spirit to be declared holy, but also for holiness of life. When the Spirit comes, He always glorifies Jesus, who promised you in your baptism, Lo, I am with you always. That's why when you come into church to worship, the very first thing you should do is look right over there to the baptismal font and say, I have been given the right and privilege to be here through my baptism into Christ. For I am now clothed with Christ. And now clothed with Christ, I can be bold to confess my sin because I know the sweet absolution follows. Instituted by Christ himself. You, you were baptized. You were set apart as holy. You were declared forgiven of all sins and the righteousness of of Christ dwells upon you in the sight of your heavenly Father. He looks at you and he says before the angels and before all the world, even the devil should he appear before God. Look at my holy children. Sinless. For they are wrapped in Jesus. I see them through him. And you are holy. You are baptized set apart, declared forgiven. You are righteous in the sight of your Father when the name of Jesus was brought to you and faith was worked in you by the Holy Spirit. And once again, this is what St. Paul says, you were washed, baptism. You were washed, you were sanctified, set apart as holy. You were justified, declared innocent of your sins in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So Pentecost wasn't just a a back then thing, but rather every Lord's Day is a little Pentecost. Why? Because Jesus is proclaimed here. That Jesus of the prophetic and apostolic scriptures, the Son of God incarnate, crucified, risen, ascended, and coming again. That Jesus who won our forgiveness by his death, that Jesus who proved our resurrection by his own, that Jesus who ascended on high so that he might still come among Christians in worship, no matter where Christians might be gathered together with baptism, word, and body and blood, that Jesus who shall come again, who will reunite our purified souls with our resurrected perfect bodies. And I wouldn't say that, and you wouldn't be here to hear it, We would not believe it and confess it and live it unless the Holy Spirit had already opened our mouths, our ears, our hearts, our lives. The Holy Spirit moves us to be here to receive everything that Jesus has to give to bring us to our Heavenly Father. I note here the beauty of God's plan of salvation. I've said this before. I'm going to say it next week again at at Holy Trinity because it really fits there. Notice God's beautiful plan of salvation. The Father in grace and mercy sends forth His Son. The Son sends forth the Holy Spirit. The Spirit leads us back to the Son and the Son leads us to His Heavenly Father and we are saved and then we pray the Our Father, having been led back to our Father by Jesus, our Savior. Jesus said, when the Helper comes, the Spirit of Truth, He will bear witness about me, and you also will bear witness. We bear that 
scriptural witness, that creedal witness, that truth of Jesus Christ, and we also carry it with us out the doors of the church and into the world with our words, with our lives, with our souls, and with our bodies. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And the peace from God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We give thanks to God for his gospel presence among us with our offerings. We rise for prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we chiefly praise you on this day for Christ's sending of the Holy Spirit, for the conversion of lost sinners like us, that he has called and caused us to repent and believe in Jesus, who leads us back to you in prayer and praise. Help us by the Holy Spirit to remain steadfast in faith for all our days until we enter into the church triumphant in heaven above and help us now to live holy lives in our hearts, minds, bodies, and souls. And Heavenly Father, pour forth the Holy Spirit upon this nation for the repentance and faith of the lost and straying, for their new life and eternal life, and that there may also be a moral renewal among our people and all of those who make and administer our laws and especially those we know who have strayed from Christ, and most especially those from among our own loved ones. And Father, as the Holy Spirit did show St. Peter that you show no partiality, but desire all to be saved, help your church in our land to reach out to all the immigrants of our land with a hand to help them in time of need, and above all, with the call to repent and believe in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and to be saved. And Heavenly Father, have mercy upon all the ill, sending the Lord and giver of life to bring them healing through Jesus Christ our Lord. And further, send the Holy Spirit to grant them peace during the midst of their earthly trials. Help especially those suffering from new rounds of COVID and all the ill and all those who are hospitalized, and those suffering from cancer and organ failures, and those suffering from mental and emotional illnesses, and most especially those suffering from various forms of dementia, those of this congregation, our sister congregation, and all Christian congregations, and all those that we know and name in our hearts. And Father, yesterday our nation observed Armed Forces Day, so we thank you for all those serving, asking you to help them serve with strength and integrity and honor and to return safely home. And above all, that you would call and keep those who are yours in steadfast faith in Jesus by the Holy Spirit. 
and also Father on this weekend. And because of this past week and the close of many schools and, and this next week at the close of many schools, we give you thanks for all graduates. We ask you would bless them, those who are going on to further their educations, and those who have completed their educations and are now entering out into the world, that you would help them to be a blessing both in the church and in the communities which they serve. And Father, on this day, we give you thanks for the many years of your servant Cheryl Honory as she retires from active service in our Lutheran school. This has been a rich blessing to both UCLS and also to these communities and to many of us individually. Bless her now in her retirement, knowing that she will continue to serve you in her life by the way you ordain for us, knowing that she has great love for all those around her. And Father, our ascended Lord sets before us today the Holy Supper of his body and blood. Help us by the Holy Spirit to receive this most holy food in steadfast faith, not doubting, but firmly believing the words of Jesus given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. These and all our personal burdens and cares we bring before you, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In these last days you have poured out your Holy Spirit on your church that your sons and daughters might proclaim the wonders of your salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon your gathered people faithfully eating and drinking the body and blood of your Son, we may go forth to proclaim his salvation to the ends of the earth. Hear us as we pray in his name, and he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, 
drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Be seated. Good morning. Welcome all of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to our Pentecost observance here today. Have a couple of announcements. First, there will be no Saturday night church on June 1st. No Saturday night church on June 1st. And the mission festival then has been moved to June 2nd to that Sunday. So no church on the first Saturday. And the mission festival will be, is that joint mission festival with here in, with, here in Frona? Is that right? Okay. Uh, that will be held on uh, the 2nd. Uh, any other announcements by individuals? Yes, please. What's that? Okay, articles for the Trinity Titan. If you're going to have those, please get them in. Okay, you ready. The peace of the Lord be with you all.